Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll be discussing how to best layer aftershave, lotion, and cologne. Now, have you ever wondered, does it even matter how much cologne I put on, how much lotion I use, and is aftershave even necessary? Well, you're not alone. Like many of you, I used to think these same questions among a host of other questions when I was either getting ready or out shopping for a new fragrance or new lotion. Now, the first thing we're gonna talk about today is aftershave. What does it even do? Now, when you shave, your enlarged pores are now being exposed to bacteria. Aftershave helps clear out that bacteria from your pores. Now, you might be wondering, how does this even happen? Well, aftershave usually contains a lot of different ingredients, but one of the main ingredients is called an astringent, and this ingredient helps close your open pores. Now, instead of using aftershave, there are actually other options you might be able to use. One of those options is called witch hazel. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably just thought that's a creepy name, but I promise you it's got some great benefits. Now, witch hazel, unlike its other alcohol-based aftershave counterparts does not contain ingredients that are gonna help irritate the skin, but it still helps to tighten the skin and close the pores. If you've ever experienced razor bumps or ingrown hairs, using witch hazel helps to alleviate some of that skin irritation. Now the next topic we're gonna be discussing is the lotion. Now what is lotion? Well, by definition, it is a thick liquid preparation designed to be used for medicinal or cosmetic purposes onto the skin. Now, one of the most popular ingredients you'll find in many different lotions is called shea butter. Shea butter is a great moisturizing agent. Now, when should you use lotion? Now, if you grew up in a household like mine, you're probably almost told to bathe in lotion. Now, it's best to use lotion right after you're finished bathing, but it's also nice to reapply it to rough areas throughout the day when needed, like your hands, elbows, knees, or your heels. Having to only apply a light layer of lotion is actually the goal, but you can reapply to rough areas when needed. Please be aware that when using a facial lotion, for example, you can overuse it, and this can cause clogged pores. Now, the next thing we're gonna be discussing is cologne. What is it? Well, by definition, cologne is actually called toilet water. However, don't let that phrase scare you away from finding a great smelling fragrance. Liquid-based cologne is a very popular option that you'll see in a lot of different stores when you're shopping for fragrances. However, liquid is not the only format in which you can actually buy cologne. A solid wax-based cologne is also a very strong option to use. Solid cologne is actually quite portable, and some may argue that the added benefits of moisturization and the longevity of the fragrance make it actually a stronger option to use. Now, if you are choosing to use a liquid cologne, remember when spraying, less is more. Remember, you don't want to be considered that guy who always has to bathe in a bottle and a half of cologne every time they leave the house. Use a small amount of cologne once you've bathed. Do your best to not spray on your clothing as the fragrance will not last throughout the day. It's best to spray cologne on heated areas of the body, also called pulse points. Certain areas like this would be your throat or your chest. Now you might be wondering, can cologne expire? Well, the answer is actually no, but the scent over time will change from what the original scent was. Now to avoid having a cologne scent shift too quickly, it's best to keep your bottle of cologne away from direct sunlight and your bottle cap securely fastened. Also, try to keep your cologne within a consistent temperature. There are also differences between cologne and perfume. Growing up, we always viewed perfume and cologne differently. I thought that perfume was for women and cologne was for men. Now, I don't know where I came to these conclusions, but I have since learned the differences. Really, it comes down to the amount of oil each contains. Now, the highest amount of oil is usually found in perfume, which contains around 25%. Cologne, by oil concentration, is further down the list at around 3%. Now that we've discussed aftershave, lotion, and cologne differences, let's look at how to best layer them. Now, while in the shower, use a facial cleanser. Proceed to shave your face, apply your aftershave. Then apply a toner, your SPF, and then your moisturizer or facial lotion. Then apply a body lotion. After completely moisturizing your body, then you can apply your cologne to your pulse points. Just remember, with fragrance, less is more. If you're aiming for a longer lasting and stronger scent, go ahead and buy a perfume, which contains around 25% oil concentration versus cologne at around 3% concentration. Remember, aftershave is your friend. Go ahead and apply your aftershave. 
If you have sensitive skin, try witch hazel instead, as opposed to other alcohol-based alternatives. Use lotion, especially in rough areas like hands, knees, elbows, and heels. Try out this layering plan and please let us know how you like it. Also, if you'd like to know more about grooming, take a look at our series on hair care and skin care here. Today I'm wearing a warm burgundy cotton crew neck sweater, a white spread collar dress shirt, medium wash denim with a brown belt from Anton, and some faux gray tassel loafers. Thank <laughs> you.